Eddie Long that guy. And shout out to Red Light Crew. Hey, you're one of 12 listeners of the Real Life Podcast. Yeah, you know what? The, to define that uh, uh, better, um, I think the key there is... Uh, I just lost my trend of thought. Hello and welcome to episode 145 of Nation Real Life. And the the band is back together. Last week we had a pop, uh, Mary Brown's pop-in with uh, Shane Fennessy. That was fantastic. If you haven't listened to it yet, make sure you go check it out. Um, but Chalmers is back. Beg Milk is back. Of course, Jay and Wanya are here as well. I'm your host, Tyler Uremchuk. Uh, Going to talk some Oilers today, presumably. Almost yeah. exclusively. Ooh. Mm. Oh, just a podcast that's all about hockey. That <laughs> wow, we're just alienating all our listeners because they do not come to this podcast to talk Oilers. I'm sure it'll go off the rails. Yeah. We <laughs> intend to talk about Oilers hockey. <laughs> we might say the word Oilers once or twice. I'm yeah. definitely going to talk about muffins. Oh, yeah. Yeah, these mm. muffins we're having right now from Little Brick are very, very, very good. Because we work so hard and we never stop working and our job entails trying new flavors of muffins and going, eh. We got to do it for the people, man. Just had a s'more cookie. Oof, yeah, that Still was Still warm, mar- marshmallow on top, blow torched into place. Nice. Yeah, oh. yeah, it was. It to was... think my grade three teacher told me I wouldn't amount to shit. Where am I now? <laughs> Overseeing the production of cookies. Yeah, well, if you put it in, yeah. I That's like this. Usually we, have, usually we have a beer, but now we got five different muffins to test. Five. The blueberry was the best. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and no shortage of blueberry. No. No, there's a galaxy of blueberries. In and they, like, thing. just came out of the oven. Mm-hmm. As mm. Jay usually does. I'm excited for at one point where we hear chewing into his microphone because he's eating yeah, the muffin. I've already, already crushed one, even though there's some of that Nutella one left on your mate. Was that what was that was? That's a, yeah, it was a Nutella <coughs> deal. Delish. Um, the Edmonton Oilers. They are now... <laughs> Who? <laughs> Anyways, back to our muffins. Yeah, yeah chocolate. <laughs> yeah, quickly getting this... We're, we're going to get derailed eventually. It oh, took like 80 seconds maybe. There we go. Perfect. Um, but the Edmonton Oilers, they continuing their hot start, but then they hit another speed bump against the Florida Panthers. Um, you asked a question, Wanya, before we started recording. Um, is this Oilers team different than last year's Oilers team that also got off to a pretty good start? They were 6-3-1 and one under Todd McClellan to start last year. So does this feel different to you guys? Yes, of course it does. It's, 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 it's tough to articulate. I think it's because we, we, it's, it, it, it's, we shot, shot out of a cannon to start the season where mm-hmm. we slumped out of the start so we didn't feel any swag. And anytime we got a win, we're like, are we good? Are we not? But like, we've kind of established a pretty solid level of effort. Granted, you know, we have some warts that we need to sort out, but these are good things. The fact that we're winning and we still have some problems to solve, I think is a positive thing where we just started kind of slow, showed some 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 bad spots, came out hot for a little bit because we had a new coach, a new voice who was able to... Well, did that happen in the... Uh, yeah, to bring us back up. Oh, no, that was after the... the, the um, we got to 8-4-1, and one, then we tanked, then yeah. Hitch came in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. Totally different. With certain sports teams, I think you get a feeling by just watching them, uh, like what their problems are and whether or not they're overcomable, right? And this team seems to have small and few problems that are overcomable right now. Whereas in in the past, when you could just kind of see that guys weren't getting along, like right now, I see some problems that aren't overcomable for like the Maple Leafs, for example. When those guys aren't sticking up for each other, it makes mm-hmm. me feel like. They have a real room problem in there oh, right I now, love it. right? Like I love it. one guy gets hurt and Matthew skates right past him. Sorry, gets hit. Matthew skates right past the guy, even though he's the first guy there. He could at least just show something. Sure, he you doesn't. Care, man. And the next game, he gets hit, and nobody comes around. Matthew got hit, and yeah, and in both <laughs> situations, the guys that laid the hit were looking around like, "Why hasn't anybody like they're they got their head on a swivel, right? They're expecting somebody. They know they just did one of those. You know, they leveled the guy. They did one of those hits that's." You know, you're going to have somebody coming up from behind you and you're going to have to answer the bell, right? Both times it didn't happen. That to me is like a problem that's, you can't just come and have like a team meeting and hope that everybody gets back on the same page. Right now, for the Oilers, I mean, what is our biggest problem? The fact that our bottom six isn't scoring? Like, Well, that's solvable. It just does, and it's scoring. solvable. Exactly. That's Easy. what I'm trying to say. Like, you get these feelings about these teams and... It's a totally different team. It's a totally different feel. To, to jump on the shitting on the Leafs, which is just a pastime of mine because we've got a few friends in our circles that are Leafs fans, that, that whole not uh, you know sticking up for one another, you've got, a, you've got a situation potentially where it's a bunch of me's playing on a team 
or you got a situation where the team is kind of just tuned out. Well, ho- two straight holdouts show that they're it's a me- it's a meat team. I mean, it, but but also you know does I, it? It, it also it? it also it also could be a, a room that's checked out on its coach and they just their their desire to play has gone down as well. So it's kind of that could be a factor as well. But you know, as an Oilers fan, I love seeing it. If that if if that Petrie hit happened on Oscar Clefbaum, i.e., how Petrie hit Tyson Berry like that, you know someone is going to approach Petrie on the Oilers. You I remember know w- that watching a game last year. I can't remember which one, like. January, February, and McDavid got hit right in front of the opposing team's bench, and Luch skated right past McDavid being on the ice and went and sat down. I was like, it's not why we got you, you motherfucker. I don't think now, who's going to stand up for a guy like that? Cassian? I think Nurse. Nurse. Dry settle get involved. Luch oh, gets yeah. involved. Hey, yeah, uh, Luch, McDavid, Luch. McDavid went and, and kind of went up to somebody last yeah, game or two games face. ago yeah. and was in somebody's face. Obviously, yeah. he's not going to drop the mitts, but he's going to say it's something It's like an enforcement by just, committee. Yeah, yeah, it's just like showing, yeah. like, I've got your back. Like, yeah. even if you're not going to go up and fight, I know that it probably pisses a lot of people off when somebody goes up to these guys and talks to them and isn't just, you know, like, I want to fight. Yeah. Because it's like you're just doing it as posturing. But that posturing means something. Well, like, it's it's a function of, like, and this is, the, sorry, I, I was distracted with a text when I was answering um and this is something. It's <laughs> it's it's something that has flipped my afternoon upside down. Which whatever we'll we'll share later. But uh, was it the fifth, the sixth muffin we didn't get? Yeah, I, I've got the muffin coma right now. Mm. But it's playing for each other, right? Which is something that the Oilers are doing right now that is noticeably different than last year. There is still some there is some dark clouds over the team last year. Uh, that was been carried over, and now that's been physically removed. And I think it's cloudy in Calgary now. And now we've got a positive room and we've got a team that's playing for each other. So they will come to one another's defense where in, in Toronto, that's just lost. There's, 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 there's no desire. Like there's no, like, they, they, like the, like the fact that like that, that flyby that Austin Matthews did on Jeff Petrie was fucking unbelievable. Like shocking that that happened in a, in, in an NHL hockey game. Millennials, man. <laughs> Just all about themselves, you know? <laughs> I think, like, you mentioned, like, who is going to be the guy that stands up? And it, in today's NHL, it's not even so much about having a tough guy anymore, no. right? It's just about, like you said, having a group that is together and kind of working on the same page, yeah. which I, I think I agree. I think the Leafs are not. I think a part of it, too, is winning as well and having that swagger. Like you said, the Oilers going and winning five straight games to start the season gave them that swagger and gave mm-hmm. them a bit of confidence. Whereas when you're struggling like the Leafs are, it's a thing where you're just so you're just so rattled about everything else that's happening that when you see a guy get blown up, you're like almost not in the mood to be like, oh fuck, here we go. Now I gotta fight this guy. Whereas when you're winning a lot of games, mm-hmm. you're like, you know what? Fuck this guy. We're gonna beat you guys and I'm gonna beat your ass. Type it reminds thing. me of have you ever seen Cool Runnings? Mm. Mm-hmm. It Excellent reminds me film. when they get in a bar fight and it really unites the team, you know? Sanka makes his first punch, a drop a drop kick. Huh? Everybody gets involved. They got their wrists slapped but they join together as a team and as a unit. So the Oilers are kind of like the bobsled team from Cool Runnings. You really love Cool Runnings. And muffins. I was doing a little dance. You guys couldn't see it, but I was doing a little muffin dance. It was nice. Yeah, I I caught that out of the corner of my eye, and I wasn't exactly sure what it was, but now that I'm happy muffin dance. It's happiness. You're probably foreign to you being like, what's that guy? What's with his face? Why are the corners of his cheeks pointing north? I'm feeling bad for this one that nobody's touched. What the, What's it all about? What well, happened we'll get to, to it. it. Don't worry. Oh, yeah, don't worry. Those muffins aren't going anywhere. Yeah. So can, can I ask something about the bottom six? I had somebody on Twitter reach out to me, and I don't know why you this person... You must be thrilled. I don't know why this person came to me. <laughs> if this person wanted like some real hard-hitting yeah, answers to their questions, take. I don't know what the fuck they're doing on, on my DMing. But this person asked me, when I'm with the boys, why don't you guys talk about Scotty Upshaw as a bottom six? To which I replied, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Oh, I get it. <laughs> I know that Scott like Upshaw isn't signed. I know together that he's like a good out, 2013 like, plan. How would I know? Oh, now. Yeah. Mm. Like, does anybody in here have any uh, idea I, what that? Well, D- Dallas, so he signed a PTO in Dallas. And, you know, Fort McMurray kid, Alberta boy, lots of love. Great guy. Great, uh, great, we, great we met him. I mean, great, we know him. He's a good guy. Great guy. So and and he, and teammates love him. Yeah, I just I, I just Dallas didn't sign him. They cut him on on the PTO, and I and 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 I didn't watch him play. So I don't know where he's at. But his last five years, he's just been 
a fourth line checking guy, but he's really well known for the guy that brings good tunes to the dressing room mm. and is like the glue guy yeah. around that. So I don't think we need that right. Like if, if it's just, we don't need a glue guy. And I think that's what he would bring. I don't know if he has offensive upside right now, just cause I don't know if his speed's there. He's just coming off of recovering from a, from knee surgery because he, he failed a medical last year for the yeah. Oilers because of all that. So, you know, he's an older player recovering from a knee injury. Um, I don't. I think. I, I think on a recent interview, I heard him talking about exploring Europe as an option. So I think he's already kind of mentally removed himself from the NHL. So I don't think he would be a, a fit or would be an improvement on the uh, a bottom six. Yeah, and I agree. Like in the room and all that, you hear a bunch of great things about a guy like that. But um, I don't think he's like a substantial upgrade on Gagne or Yurkcho or guys like that. Um, I, I think he's just sort of a filler ish wiener type of player and that's not like i'm not saying that to like knock him or rip him but i just think that's the unfortunate reality of where he is in his career like if they want to go improve this bottom six the answer probably isn't sitting out as a free agent right now unless it's like thomas vanek i think Uh the answer finally wanya gets his (laughs) thomas Thomas vanek i haven't heard that name in a long time you know what i read this morning i I remember a guy dennis seidenberg why why do we know that name like i know him because he obviously played in the nhl but because our our buddy played with his brother our buddy played with his brother and so like i kind of i kind of knew i watched dennis seidenberg just retired yeah Yeah. i didn't even know he was still playing like this was like 10 years ago we were talking about dennis seidenberg he's been hanging on by a thread with the Islanders for a while oh yeah Yeah. okay what because i so are you saying dennis seidenberg is no it's just because thomas vanek was a name i hadn't heard in years i thought didn't even know what he was doing free agent yeah but uh it just reminded me of seidenberg i remember when vanek signed and the squire and i were debating whether or not this was a good idea remember they offer sheeted him yeah it's like the only offer sheet not to go through was the vanek one no there hasn't been many no, Weber, for the Oilers, I mean. oh, Weber, for the Oilers, yeah. For the Oilers. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Okay, one for two. Yeah. But I was thrilled. I'm like, Vanek is the answer. And Jay's like, They'll, he'll never live up to that contract. What a piece of shit. He had a pretty good he, showing in the first half. He didn't live up to that contract. No. Though, in the back half. Yeah. Since, since you guys are my gauge on how to feel about hockey things. You're Joaquin gauge? Do we, yes. A, two guys in the goalie. Do we, <laughs> Pop do we feel Mary bad Brent? for Reader right now? Or what do we feel about him? Is he? I don't feel bad for anybody. He finally scores a goal and then he goes, and now he's getting waved. At least he's ending things on a high note. <laughs> yeah, like, what has he done? Like, what is he going to do? <laughs> yeah, I think he's hey. probably going to go to Europe. Yeah, he'll go and play in Germany Him and for De- sure. Devontae Smith Belly, I already signed in Europe. Kunlin, I think he signed it with the Kunlin Red Star Ooh, team. Wow. That team's loaded now, but anyway. Wasn't he like, didn't he have a, didn't he, wasn't he a big piece of their Stanley Cup win, or was he not? Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. He was. So but what just, the hell happened? Did he uh, party too hard for a year straight? So no, yes. or what? Just, just the game kind of got a little faster. I don't know. Just yeah, him, him advancing in age. I don't even think he's that old, but. I think every NHL player is capable go- of going on a heater for 20 games. Like, yeah. I mean, we saw it last year. We'll get to this, too, with Alex Chase on, right? Oh, and when you just God. get Fernando scored, Bassani. they're all such good hockey players that you can get red hot for a month. And if that happens to be in the playoffs, like Demont- Devontae smith Pelly, you're going to extend your career for a little bit. Um, but at the end of the day, things regress and things go back to the middle. And I think that's kind of what happens with a lot of these guys. I like to see that. I like to think that. Lucic asked for some scoring advice as Reader was leaving because he does have a goal, whereas Luch does not. What would that advice have been from Reader to Lucic? Well, <laughs> I assume that it has shoot to be... Shoot where uh, the goalie isn't? Yeah, sh- shoot more and skate faster. <laughs> interesting. Very interesting. I love the to plug another Nation Network site, that Flames Nation piece on why Lucic is better than Neil. That was some they, good satire. Holy fuck. When they're just like, he made Sam Bennett look good. <laughs> Don't see, uh, don't see Neil doing that. <laughs> yeah, Ramina Shaw wrote that. She did a great yeah. job. It was hilarious. It's oh, when I when I when I saw the headline, I was like, "What the fuck?" Like full Kool Aid mode that's flowing through the Bow River there. Flames Nation does that like once a year because last year they had the piece on like why Johnny Goudreau is better than Connor McDavid, and they're basically like <laughs> Johnny's just a better name in general. Yeah, it's oh, oh, I love so those. much smaller. Uh, I, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, you guys are still going to all your games, right? Like, you still go to a lot of oh, games. Oh, yeah. yeah. I took my boys to the game, the Philly game. Did yeah. I tell you guys that? No. No? The in-game experience. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, we know that because you fucking Oh, yeah, we're supposed us. to meet you. Oh, let's meet oh, the intermission yeah. on the oh, main concourse. We're watching well, we you s- down below with like eight drinks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me and, and my hi- rich friend. In the like high society eight lounge. Eight other people, four of which are kids, three of which are kids. 
Uh, can't just like. What was it one of your kids that go up the magic escalator? And then, was and it then, one of your kids that texted Jay and said, "I'll meet you, you guys, guys at intermission"? I, uh, it must yeah, have been your kid texting. No, yeah. I said, "I'll meet you." I, I mm. sent you mm. a picture of the tickets mm -hmm. so you could come down. Chalmers, I'm not. I don't know why you wouldn't do that. What? 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 No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go to the other side of the tracks just to say hi. Uh, we either your grimy friends, you come meet up top, right. or we're not. Friends. Intermissions are not that long we when you got kids, man. You got to go do shit. You got to go take pisses. You got to get M and M's. You got to get yourself a beer. We watched you stand around as a group, congregating for like yeah, five minutes, giving away your business cards. And then, and and then like they're just sitting there so doing pay, nothing. And I'm like, well, we're up here. Like you so could, to pay me back, we were going to sit downstairs and we were going to have a beer after the game, let the kids run around in the open space. But you guys were like, no, let's meet in Ford Hall. They have no, a place, no, 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 they have no, a place no, where no, we can no, have no, a no, drink. No. And I said, no, no, we no, have no, our no. kids. And you, I said, you kid never friendly. And you offered, said, you didn't say come down here after the game. We're saying, you you just went dark after we busted you. And then I said, dude, let's meet in Ford Hall after the game. And you said, yeah. I'm like, and then I said, I don't even think it's, I'm not sure if the if the Bolson Beer House or whatever the fuck it's called. I asked kid friendly. If, I, you I, said, I, I don't know. I don't know. And then you said, oh, it's final. They can run around outside. That's what you said. Yeah. I don't even know if any of those kids or even your kids. I didn't know that 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 in order like if the kids are outside of that Ford Hall kind of little pub, if you're at the bar, you're like a football field away from them. I thought it was going to be like a beer garden at like the Folk Fest or something where they're like literally on the other side of a rope. Chalmers thought Ford Hall is like Folk Fest. Interesting. No, it's just a, okay, pick any other festival for Christ's sake. You know what I mean? Fire Festival? No. Woodstock 99. Anyways, in game, in game you experience. You thought Ford Hall's like Woodstock 99 when they played break stuff and everyone lit all that shit on fire? Yes. Wow. Hunter That's walked right up the railing, right next to my boys. That was probably the highlight of my kids of the game for the boys. They, love they loved it. What about McDavid's goal? Well, they loved that too. They, oh, but in my, but in my, we had like the seats that were perfect angle just to see like that shot. Um, and Neil's shot, like the boys were into it, man. They loved every second of it. It was a good game. Really Great good game. game. I'm feeling super good about the start of the season. Do you remember a guy who made predictions to start the year and said the Oilers are going to go super hot out of the gate, then they're going to cool off towards the end of the month, and everyone's going to freak out, then they're going to light it back on fire mid-November all the way through to Christmas? That was me, by the way. It is interesting, though, just even losing one game. It could be a 2-1 loss, a 6-3 loss, whatever it is. Oilers fans are on edge right now. Oh, I know. We're still not sure if it's real or not. I get it. Like, because we've had, we've been kicked in the pills 13 for 13 years. So it's tough to like have any kind of swag or confidence. So I get it. But in these games that we've lost, there's only been like, like in Minnesota. Yeah. There's like a small amount of time where we fell asleep. But after that, we were in the mix. And if you remove that situation, now granted, that's a big thing. But if you remove that, we, could you could you could argue we played well enough to have a chance to win? Same thing against Florida. We lost six two. Mike Smith yep. took one to the pills, and all of a sudden, well, that's the whole thing. Like I think in that game, you know, we we gave them some chances, but that that whole thing with Mike Smith, you he shouldn't have come back. Obviously, that 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 what that's happened. such hindsight though. Like if you're in the room, oh, Mike no. Smith is like, I'm good. But of course, and and, and he is always going to do that. Except right? to be yeah. all like, I'm good. Yeah, he's yeah. like, oh, your balls. Yeah, he's trying to push his testicles down. So he's a stomach. warrior. I'm sure him and Tip had a conversation, <laughs> yeah. and Tip and and Smith is Tip's boy. So he's going to be like, yeah, you know what, you're in. And so whatever, like that's that's fine. So I, I I'm so positive that Mike Smith is aware that he shouldn't have come back. And he knows that costs the team that he's going to steal us a game later in the season. He's going to he's going to make us whole. I still think Koskinen should have started that game regardless because he was really good against Washington. But I think we're seeing a little bit now, and it'll be interesting. I'm going to uh, something I'm keeping an eye on over the next month. I think Tippett really really prefers Mike Smith over Miko Koskinen, and that's why we're seeing him kind of favor Smith in terms of who's going to be the starting goalie on any given night. Like when there's an opportunity for the slightest argument to be made for Mike Smith to start, Tippett's going to him over Koskinen. And I mean, Koskinen's undefeated. Yeah, you can't argue that. Let's talk about that Washington game though. Cause we got to oh. sit around here in blue, blue, blue all the live long day. That Washington game was some hot shit. That was so fucking awesome. What's the difference between last year's team and this year's team? This year's team was down three, one to Washington and one last year's team ain't doing that. Well, during those, like, so up until the third period, starting basically in that Detroit game until the third period, Connor was kind of asleep. I don't know if he was sick or what was going on because he's always ten. just going through a natural slump, maybe. Yeah, but it's it's un Connor like, and it's not. I'm not. I'm not saying that to shit on Connor, but mm. obviously there's there must you, have been. You could tell last year when he went through a little thing like this, and then it came out that he was sick, 
and yeah. it looked just like it. Yeah, and, and I have to agree with him. It, but but like, holy shit, did he rise from the ashes in the third period of that game? That was you've like very rarely do you see a single player dominate an entire. Well, I guess in this instance, period of hockey like Connor did. I was doing my thing on the Nation account, just tweeting. The amount of tweets I was getting coming in from people being like, should we be worried about what's going on with Connor right now? And then he goes and has arguably what was one of the best periods I've seen him play in a long time. It was just it was just funny to see how it went from, yeah. oh my God, we're panicking, to holy shit, that was incredible. But one thing I'm noticing that we do need to kind of maybe put a four, especially this on the bottom six, is like, why don't we bring the play to the front of the net? Like they're so focused on the cycle, and they gotta get greasy. But also, like, and, and on the top six, they're always trying to make like crazy plays happen. Like, let's just get pucks on net. You said it. I think you tweeted it the other day when you said simplify or whatever. You yeah, said, I, I think they need to throw pucks on net, get greasy, go bang and crash. Especially since the bottom six, they're not scoring at all right now, and they've got yeah. some big bodies down there. Like Jujar can go smash and bang away and hack. In front of the net, yeah. it's gonna, you're going to have a hard time stopping him from doing yeah, it. Yeah, just, just somehow just get it and just throw the puck into that area and see what kind of fucking shit they can squeak out. I think I think we'll start seeing them get some goals, but they're so focused on keeping the puck into the corners, which is also eating up clock. So provided your top six are performing, well, then they're doing their job. So, like, there's a lot of positives from all this. But I want to bring up the fact I've got a beef. I've got my Marcus Granlund situation. He's and getting healthy. What's your problem with Marcus Granlund? It, well, it's it's Remchucks. Oh, you had a problem? I, 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 I think have, he's. Terrible. I have no qualms, but my beef is with fucking Chase on. Oh my god, so many beefs. What's going on with him now? What, what, what's my other beef? I mean, he's got no, he's got a beef oh. with Granlin. You got a beef with Chase on? You beef it with anybody you want you? No, no, I'm cool with everybody right now. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> so what's up? Uh, we love this guy. He, he had to do something real bad. No, no, it's just how it. So I, I don't know if it's a confidence thing. There's a few things. Anytime he has to make a pass or he's looking to shoot. He's looking down at the puck. He's not playing with Connor. He's looking down at the puck before he makes a play with the puck, which is like that's not the NHL level. Like head up, make a play, let's go. Because he's that that millisecond of looking down could kill everything, which has happened. But where I really got pissed off with him, where he could have changed the landscape of a game, was it against Florida. Mike Hoffman was teed up to be blown up, and Chason was coming at him and elected to do a pass by a la Austin Matthews on Petrie and wave at the puck. He could have blown him up to the point where that could have tilted the momentum of the game. You've got to take that hit. That is a fucking star player, and he put himself in a compromising situation with his head down, open ice, and it would have been a totally clean hit. You fucking have to take that hit, and he didn't, and that pissed me off. Sounds like it. He's in my yeah. bad books. Okay. So stop, <laughs> looking, uh, so stop <laughs> looking down at the puck before you need to make a play. Maybe he's just the ultimate there is, good guy. Respect in sports, Jay. This, this, it, You're not <laughs> talking to your novice team right now, I Chalmers. I don't give a shit yeah. about Chase. Like, that, was, that, was a, that was a chance. That was a chance to change the yeah. the the momentum of the game. He hasn't he hasn't been having a good year by any stretch of the imagination. What was and the, he's not having what a good was the year. Score when this happened. Oh fuck! I don't know. It would have been. It, w- it wasn't six two. It was probably three two or four two. It was never 3-2 in the game, but it might have been, yeah, 4-2, I yeah. suppose. <laughs> oh, what, it just went 2-2, two, 4-2? Two, two? Mm-hmm. I doubt it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that guy on Reddit who said I'm a know-it-all grump, he's, oh, he's I bang talk. on today. Let's talk about that. You, you got to do more voices. That was golden. Let's talk about that. Bag do you want to uh, read us in on what happened to us on Reddit this week? We're under attack. Well, basically, uh, Reddit wasn't happy with the website. They uh, have some beefs, some legitimate, some hilarious. Um, so we were going through that today as a group and just kind of looking through what we can pull from that feedback, actually apply to the website to make it better and other stuff, just have a a hearty chuckle about like Tyler is a grumpy character. We all know he's grumpy, but he's not a character. This is him. Yeah. People said that about Oscar the Grouch, the first season of Sesame Street. And then you know what happened? People loved it. Mm -hmm. They love the grouch and the garbage. Yeah. Yeah. Like even, uh, Another funny one was somebody had a problem with Jay for talking about how passionate Finnish hockey fans are. Mm. Sal. Sal slid into Reddit, mm-hmm. didn't he? Probably. Mm-hmm. So it's just that kind of thing. Like, Remember the old man in Dennis the Menace? He was grumpy. He was. He was America's father. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My favorite thing about this is some of these beefs, like, oh, Jay doesn't shut up about Finland, and your rum truck's always grumpy. Fuck him. 
it comes from people who are clearly consuming every ounce of content we produce. And God bless them. I appreciate yeah. every single one of, of them. Course. It was just kind of funny to read the feedback. Like there's this one guy, I was going back and forth with him and I loved it. He thought I was getting salty, but I was actually laughing to myself because he is convinced that we intentionally put spelling mistakes in articles to appear more bloggy and more cool. More street? More street. street. Like, I was just like, listen, man, we just can't spell. We're not doing it on purpose. Does he mean like we're actually using like the wrong there, there, and there? Or does he mean like when we say hot take and spell it T-A-E-K? Oh, there's spelling mistakes on, on articles. Of I, course. I, Grammar I, errors. Yeah, yeah. I, I shouldn't say all the time, but like there's a heavy flow of content and we're just, you know, passionate people trying to push it out. Like, fuck, we make mistakes. I'm the wrong guy to read those because I'm just so impressed people care. Yeah. Right? I'm like, really? You care? Really? You care? Really? You notice something? Really? You don't like that? Thanks, everybody. Like, it's lost on me, right? That's why it's important that we go through and actually look for constructive things. There was plenty in there to uh, apply to the site to make it better. But there's, like I said, there was just some in there that just kind of made me chuckle. Well, and and the whole, like, like the, like the, 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 the real issue is like, oh, the site's changed since Willis and Low Tide left. And it's, well, it's one of the things, right? I think people are, but but think about it. It, Mm -hmm. It's, it's, we were able to recruit them to come to the nation, which was huge already. And then their star grew so big that the athletic just said, here, guys, here's hundreds of thousands of dollars. We can't compete with that. Oh, well, sure we could. Okay, I got to wow. do, <laughs> do this. This was my very first time on Reddit. I took this opportunity to go on there and see it. I was very confused at the beginning. Then I just searched <laughs> Oilers Nation. And the very first this one, afternoon, I don't know he's how to ask, fucking use this. He's like going to ask Jeeves later. I've never great. been on it, but I found the thread. I realized you had to click on the thread to get all 97 comments. So 97 Four comments. 97 nice. now. Wow. Good Big David. Playoffs this is fucking awesome. <laughs> These people are hilarious. Okay, so here's just the best ones. The guys who run it are pretty big assholes too. <laughs> honestly, <laughs> another guy says, honestly, they strike me as do you know who I am types. Mm, valid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, literally Juan, Juan no one knows who Wanya is. Who hides behind I don't want to. I don't want to point any fingers. I don't think he's talking about me in that I'm, sentence. You know I've what I'm been saying? Done. I've been done for a while, but mostly because of their articles and ridiculous hot takes and overreactions. Pretty much everything. Everything. Yeah. Mm. These people, man, what the fuck? Why don't they hate me more? I want them to hate me. I want to see my name on here. You got to get beef with people. Yeah, you got to get beef. Do some controversial. Do okay, Say here's how you get Sweden. beef. Figure out what nationality someone is and no, call to question what? their home country. <laughs> Two, figure out what <laughs> gender they identify with and make fun of them for that. Uh, Three, infer they can't get any members of the opposite or same sex. Mm, I can keep going. Ooh, bag milk throwing out the traffic is up 18% since last year too. Shoulder shrug emoji. I like that you go on there and flex because it shows, A, it's being read, right? The, the, the constructive criticism that come out of Reddit is that the, lo- the, t- the site is loading slowly. Yep. Yep. And there are too many ads. Yeah. We're working on it. I yep. agree. So that's great feedback. We're going to take, take, take that. Like, we're always listening. That's the thing. Like, the, uh, there are too many ads in the nation right now. And part of the reason for that is that we're, we have a new senior staff member who's a gun, Big Mike. Yeah, and his job is to do that. So Figure out what's going on. a great job. So we're testing different ad networks. We're testing different ad sizes. We're mm-hmm. turning on the levers of the internet that are very difficult yeah. to push and pull. And we, have a, we feel an obligation to provide the best experience we can for our yeah. readers. We also feel an obligation to have money and continue to hire people and work on stuff. So part of getting all of our team sites rebuilt and rebuilding hockey fights and doing our partnership with PuckPD and all the things we've been working on was to then roll out our new ad network and see what works. So I think right now when I go to the nation, I agree with the people in Reddit. There are too many ads on there and we're going to turn some off. We're going to fiddle with some stuff, but you know, unless people, I thank the people to take the time to go there and have a 97 comment thread. That's great. Yeah. There's a lot, like I said, there's a lot of good stuff in there. And like you said, we have to take at bats and test things and try things out to see what works. And if it doesn't, then we pull it off. We've always done that mm-hmm. as far as, as far as I can remember, even just being a fan of the site, you know, 13 years ago. And like everyone needs to remember, like we are a, yeah, we've got some amazing people that write for us, some mainstream media guys that write for us. So like we've got credible content, but like we are a hockey fan website. Right. So we're like, th- like we're just a community. So like the fact the community is still growing. So that's that all the all the metrics are there saying that you know we're we're doing a lot of good things. Are we perfect? No, we'll never be perfect. No, we're one just is. 
we're just we're just out there we're just out there hitting the mean streets blogging i'm going around being a pompous dick trying to piss off people because i'm better than everyone you love finland honest question yeah the fucking assholes this guy's obviously never met you guys it's the stupidest thing i've ever heard but here's an honest question the first four things on this reddit feed are about the grammar and spelling mistakes what what's going down there i'm I'm, do we need an editor-in-chief we have an editor-in-chief he's on this podcast one of the things one of the things it's not me (laughs) it used to be one of the things about the nation is we don't review articles before they're posted. So if you work for mainstream media, you send something, it gets reviewed, mm-hmm. they chop it down, they fuck with you, and then they post it up. We don't do that. Everybody who writes for us just posts their own shit. We may pull it down. We yeah. might have somebody go through the content afterwards, yeah. but it's sort of like you either write for us and make the grade, and you can publish stuff autonomously. You write for us, you put out a bunch of grammar riddled fuckery and we have to fire you or somewhere in the middle yeah listen since i've been here there's been plenty of people that have come and gone for fuckery that we didn't like Mm -hmm. so if things don't work they don't work but at the same point we're also not the new york times where i don't think we should get bent out of shape if there's a comma that's misplaced if it's the wrong there sometimes i mean it's funny and pointed out to us and we'll make fun of ourselves better than. but we do try to clean them up as much as we can oh yeah of course course yeah and well and and the other thing is that like we're doing everything like in terms of like all this content is free for people to consume right so like we're not behind a paywall we're not we're not like these crazy intense journalists who who pride themselves on proper syntax and grammar and all that stuff like we're just pumping out content because we've brought together a team that we've given creative license to to go and just post them we've given them a forum and that's and that's what we've built so we're 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 doing our thing and i'm fucking proud of what we're doing so if you hate on us that's fine that's your opinion and if you're hating on us because you're consuming our content thank you for consuming your content and continue to hate yeah and we do free content we do want the criticism because it does allow us to be better yeah more content is better than less obviously and even if it's you know like some people find it not worth going to reddit to start a whole thing at least they have an opinion on it you know what i mean you're creating like a yeah, I like it. I think it's fun. Yeah, I feel like I want to make a Reddit feed you now. Should go How do you like, do it? That Chalmers is one <laughs> yeah. real asshole, and then go on there and be like, "I heard he's great." <laughs> yeah, yeah, Chalmers. People obviously the no, market fuck accepts that. Yeah. I can't handle that shit. I wouldn't even be able to do I've it. I've been so invested in this. I haven't listened to anything you guys have been. I, saying. Are you reading the whole thing? Oh, I'm reading it's the whole great. Thing. Hey? I like this one. It becomes full of ads for mail order Russian wives and shit. But like that's that. why it's ah, fr- allow yeah, me to explain yeah. why that is the case. Oh yes, yeah. you've explained this, but do it if again. If you see Russian mail order brides on websites, it's because you're a pervert and you've been to porno sites and the cookies on your computer are such oh. that when you go to the nation, you're seeing sassy Russian bride ads. When and I go, I see ads for calculators, tax advice, and pens. Well, this when Bag Milk told him that he said that's from your cookies, bro. And the guy said that was happening on my work computer. That was used only for work in Oilers Nation, bro. So sounds no. to me like you're beating off at work, bro. <laughs> and <then laughs> Bag Milk says, "Well, that's how these ads get populated." So I don't know what to tell you. And this guy fires back, "Well, they sell that ad space to someone." Do you work at the <laughs> Genius University there, my friend? Where do you where well, do you pull a paycheck from? I I kind of want to pump my own tire. Me and Vera did transact some business that involves soliciting her services online nice yep good for you man yep. so hopefully someone picks her up brings her to canada i need to start looking at more sketchy websites so i get sexier ads mm. i'm just throwing that <sighs> out. mine keeps saying asking me to check my credit score so i don't know what the hell it's suggesting the one comment about you i don't know if you guys went over the full one but it basically said oh jay wants me to go to finland to watch a hockey game maybe my wife doesn't or my kid doesn't need diapers and my wife doesn't want to go on a trip with me Basically saying that you were forcing everyone to go to Finland and pay Buddy, money. Buddy, I'm telling you, you'll have so much fun in Finland. Your no, not, kid not that guy. Your kid don't need I don't diapers. want that guy to go to Finland. I don't like that guy. Okay, all right. His wife. His wife sounds lovely. Sounds like she's not being taken care of at home. <laughs> she might need to come to Finland. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Chalmers? <laughs> Yeah. Absolutely. I like how we do a fucking podcast and one in four people are actually I'm listening. reading this thread, man. It's I just I'm trying to find the ones that are actually like Chalmers that, specific. That no, that say J. <laughs> yeah. I'm most of it's just There's nothing about me. There's like those two Russian things. bride. Oh, okay. I'm just at the Russian bride. Whatever. It's fucking awesome. I think it's great. <laughs> it's well, great. That we 97 said we people want to be on Reddit and 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 have this conversation. One time on I Facebook, they got it out of them. I found like an 85 comment string about little brick and it was not good. 
that's when where you read it and you go, uh oh, we're in big, big trouble. It's like everybody who works at Little Brick is mean, and here's a story where they were mean to me, and someone else is like, here's a story they're mean to me too, and here's a story they're mean to me three, and that was three years ago now. Yeah, it takes time to undo damage like that, right? Oh yeah, hundred percent. And so uh, we're not trying to make light of people's opinions. Uh, we listen. <laughs> Right, it's important to understand. Little Brick is an example. We went and made changes to our team. Yeah. We talked about general likability. We showed comments to people. We're like, "This is how you're making people feel." I don't look at that list and see anything equally worrisome. Right? Like, no. I like I, I said it in a bunch of the comments in that thread actually, where it's like, we can always be better in every facet of the content that we're putting up. Yeah. From editorial to writer choices to everything. Like, there's. This by no means is Oilers Nation a finished product. It'd be hilarious if we couldn't take criticism and all we do is shit on the Oilers and if anyone shits back on us, we go insane. Of course. That's why, again, like, there's a guy in there and he's like, you feel attacked right now. Like, he's implying like I'm triggered. No. But he also, in the same vein, said that he knows everything about how I operate at the site, which, if you know anything about me, you know that I read a thread like that and I kind of like it. Yeah. I yeah. kind of like it. Yeah. We've been told off too many times to have feelings. Oh, uh, the yeah, skin man. is thick. I want to be triggered. Yeah? yeah. Oh, Charles. I only get triggered at work, and it's not good. <laughs> Fuck that. We trigger you all the time. <laughs> In person. Here? I just mean by people that I... Fuck it, yeah. I don't go know. Tr- yeah, you, you, know you want to get triggered? Troll these people, Chalmers. Like go, go into, on there? Go into comments on Twitter. Look up people talking on others' games and just insert yourself in their conversations. See, I always worry that it gets that I can do it in a playful way back, but that they will take it in a way and no. then go super deep. And uh, You know how to move through life. You can go on there and make fun. I, I mean, I've had, I've had some fun with people. Yeah, like, yeah, I know. I've seen you. It's been good. And I usually get the, the best is when they say something. And like just uh, on, on my, my runaway train tweet there. Uh, that got <laughs> oh, over a thousand tree. likes. Fuck, smash hit. Boom, number and one. And got uh, people plagiarizing me from New <laughs> yeah. Jersey Devils. Yeah. Uh, one a media reporter for the New Jersey Devils. Yeah. And two Pete Blackburn. Days, two days later, that same guy. Two you work for guys. the Devils? No, two different guys. Yeah, Pete Blackburn. You got, for the Devils. You got... Yeah, you got, in New Jersey... He's you oh, got okay, heavily plagiarized. Work. Whatever. Um, but yeah, so... It's, it's an it, honor to be plagiarized by people. Someone Blackburn. read your lip reading. That's yeah. an honor in the lip reading yeah. industry. I love the people that were like, that's not what they're saying. I'm like, no, like, if you have two fucking eyes, you can tell that's exactly Whoa. what they're saying. What? I'm just saying, if you have two fucking eyes, you're just coming at people hard. Yeah, well... Like two eyes having sex with each other? Is triggered. Two eyes fucking... <laughs> yes. Or what? That's, no. what that's, what that's what they're doing when they're cross-eyed. Anyways... Ooh. What else? Anyways, Reddit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so well, can, I don't know. That's not really. Can we talk about? <laughs> did you guys see this Bud Light guy at the World Series? So he's he's being called the Bud Light guy now. Okay. Yeah. Dreams come true. For so myself. They, go on. So this they say yeah, we'll talk this that. guy was walking down to his seats, got to his f- seat right on the fence in the home run area. He was holding two super cans of Bud Light. Perfectly. A home run was hit. Logos. And the ball was coming right at him. And and there was a kid sitting there, and he stepped to the side and took it in the gut. Didn't drop his beers, took it in the gut so that it wouldn't hit anybody else. And it's like perfectly shown on TV. The product placement of the Bud Lights in his hand is so perfect. Both Bud Lights are showing. Darren Ravel said that this accumulated to around $7 million worth of um, ad, ad fees for like, but for like ad worth. I don't even yeah, know. Yeah, what that yeah. is. So Bud Light is sending this guy to the rest of the World Series games, and calling him Bud Light Man. That's how so like Duff Man was born. It was so cool, man. So what? What's it, so? This is a perfect situation where this guy is going to become a short-term celebrity. Short. And then, oh, and they're going to figure out in 1998 he tweeted about the Jews oh, yeah. or some horrible. Yeah, oh my God. Poor. Like I, I hope it doesn't happen, but poor guy if it does. It was so. I mean, when I saw, yeah, I, when I saw it, I just thought it was the funniest thing in the world. And then that somebody could even quantify how much ad value that had. Yeah, they just say like it's like that's all Ravel does, does though, really. Put like a TV value to it, and the celebration in like the Bud Light marketing headquarters when this happened, right? And then not only do you get the whole Bud Light thing going viral, but then you know you send them to the World Series and you get tens of thousands of news outlets writing stories and adding it into the news, and you're just like rolling and rolling it's one of those things that's snowballed down the hill right like this one little good thing happens and everything keeps going like, have you heard of mattress mac oh, yes nice. fucking Matt- mattress mattress mac yeah. was awesome chalmers and, and- is my fellow podcast degenerate gambler so of course he knows yeah darren Ravel actually followed this guy because yeah. he he did a total of like 10 was it 10 million he's up to about 12 million bet on the houston astros to win the world yeah, series have so you heard of this he's an 80 year old man from houston who made his money selling mattresses and this guy 
started traveling around and Darren Ravel traveled with him for the day as he fall as he went to like seven different sports books that would actually take and he and he maxed out a bet on the Houston Astros to win the game or the World Series to win, to win the, the World, World Series. Series and he's been doing it to win games and stuff now too but the reasoning is his chain of mattresses had a promotion at the beginning of the year where if you buy a mattress from this time to this time and the Astros win the World Series you bring in your receipt he fully refunds you and the mattress is free or the furniture is free so he's doing this to hedge his bets because he would lose so much in inventory if the Astros win that now he's just doing it where it's free publicity again because Ravel's following him around. Oh, yeah. Bleacher Report is doing live cams on He's become a celebrity. Games. He's a celebrity. Mattress Mac is super famous. And all that's going to happen out of this is he'll break even so, or he'll win a couple mil because the Astros won the World Series. So, yeah, game two in Houston, they're already down one game. This is the game that he's making all the rest of his bets for the rest of the World Series. Yeah. And he's walking around the stadium they're, they've lost the game. They're now down 0-2 in the World Series, and he has, at this point, $10 million in bets. He's walking around with the biggest smile on his face. People have signs saying, like, Mattress Mac, we love you, Mattress Mac. He's taking pictures in the concourse with people. Like, this dude's a celebrity. He's, he's getting a ton of publicity, uh, of publicity for this. And he's, like, just doubling and tripling yeah. down. Like, I, I saw something where he bought a bunch of seats and gave them to a bunch of veterans just so he could, you know, Obviously, because he's a good guy, I guess, but also because more Mac. publicity, more publicity. Like, can you imagine betting? He, I think, I think one bet, the biggest bet he made was just a million bucks. And they, like, no, like I just, think three million was the yeah, first bet he, found he made. A book. Oh, was he had it? to find a, a book because there was like a lot of like six hundred thousand, seven hundred thousand. Yeah. Okay, so but three million. Like, imagine I'm betting seven hundred grand. They're going to win tonight, or I'm adding to my bet. They're going to win the World Series. He's betting so, it on the line of the World Series now. No, he now, so he went. Tyler he, he says went, that didn't he go three million? And then they lost the first two games, and then has been adding subsequent bets yeah. after because he's getting like crazy he's odds. Getting better odds. Yes. So he bet he went like big on game three for them just to win the game, but he also put another bet down on them to still win I the mean, series. I mean, if he's got the risk tolerance to be betting three million dollars on a single oh, game, geez. then yeah, he's probably betting a lot more than just like the games. He's probably got some serious wood in mm-hmm. action a lot of places. A couple of questions for context for me. Yes. Who are they playing? The Houston Astros? The Washington Nationals. Okay. That's why Trump was at the game. Got that. Uh, what's the series at? Right now, it's 2-2. No, it's 3-2. No, Sorry. Three, two. Yeah, game four tonight, Houston. Ah, so the Mattress won. guy is going to so, be happy. Yeah, so like Washington won both games in Houston, mm-hmm. and then Houston came back and won both games in Washington. All three games in Washington. All th- oh, yeah. Sorry. They went they three. Do two, three. This is two. the only C- series where like usually they say the series doesn't start until the home team wins. Until the home team loses, right? Loses, yeah, um, yeah. But the home team has lost every single <laughs> every game. single game. It's unbelievable. It's been a hell of a World Series. Oh. And to bring it all thing. right back to publicity and this kind of thing, the World Series seems to be the place where people are going to get publicity right uh, now. I can think of four publicity things that happened. Are Remember the four titties? Of them tits. Oh, should we shout, yeah, should we shout out the yes. tits? So those chicks from Shag Mag who went down, stood behind Garrett Cole in, I don't even know what inning that was, like the sixth or yeah. seventh, and just... Pulled up their t- well. I watched. I saw a video. I got it sent to me of why they did this, and it shows their whole day preparation. Where they like, they go online. They're trying to buy the tickets. They finally get the tickets. They're and then now they've like they got these shirts printed that when they flashed them up, it says Shag Mag on the front. But when they flashed them up, which you didn't see because of the camera angle, they had two big pink ribbons on the inside of them. They were ultimately doing this, they say, to bring awareness to breast cancer and to try to like sure, raise money for breast cancer. Whatever. That it, that is, and so on this whole eleven minute video that they have, it just shows them at the game. It then shows them go down. They're getting ready. They're super nervous. They're like, okay, it's our time. They even have like a special way they have to lift the shirt so that the ribbons will show. Them like, ribbons didn't show these, though. These girls didn't just walk down there and be like, let's go show our tits. Like they had this planned out. They knew what they were doing. They own a they own a website that's basically like a content website, just like your guys. You know, but like I think it's probably a, no spelling mistakes because it's all yeah. photos of titties. But. Probably aren't hated on Reddit, but yeah, it's like a, a new, it's like a millennials playboy. I think like you know. So, anyways, these the, and so then it shows them get escorted out. They go to the security room. You know, the head of security is like you guys from this point forward. They're filming this. They're they sh- they've got it filmed, but it's black. You can only hear what's happening. Oh. right. So it's like in the pocket. And this head of security is like, I'm the head of security with MLB. Um, you guys are going to be banned from every stadium for the rest of your lives. Do you have any questions? They're like, no, nope, not really. And uh, so then they received a letter for it the next day. And yeah, they are no longer allowed to go to any baseball stadium. This was always my great concern with doing Weather's Nation. 
was that they would get pissed at us and they would be like, do not serve more than four wines to Fred. <laughs> There'd be a photo of us inside Rexall Place being like, uh-uh, not these two. My greatest worry in life would be the Oilers in the playoffs and I'm not able to get into the arena. Well, I'm going to... Chalmers, I want to table somebody. I think I think sure. I know how to blow up the podcast. Does it have to do with me doing something? And us doing something. Okay, as long as it's enough. All right, we're going to document this. Mm-hmm. And we're going to make the big time ropes for, out for the show. <laughs> yeah, no. does, does this include oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> we're going to put we're going to put we're going to put Oilers Nation on our titties. Okay. And when we go down to Buffalo, sit in the end zone. We're going to flash after Buffalo scores a touchdown in front of us. How do we know we're going to be gonna on gonna TV? Get, buddy, but, we're showing our tits. But we're just yeah, why are the dude, you know how many dudes sit in and like big fat dudes sit with their big fat tits out in like the upper deck in the middle of like a summer game, but they're not. That's yeah, but, disgusting. But they're not. They're not flashing, and there's no propaganda to promote. This is yeah. this is foolproof. Well, it's funny you say that. I'm sitting here, and the other reason I'm looking at my phone is because my doorbell camera keeps going off uh-huh. because I'm expecting a shipment today. Of and cocaine. It is, uh, oh, come no. on. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think he. Oh, are you ram trip? What are you anti cocaine? All of a sudden, <laughs> shit. Oh, no, that's due next week. But uh, right now, my Buffalo Bills attire is showing uh-huh. up. What do you get? Uh, interesting. So if we all show up looking the fucking same no, way, we won't, I will be fucking naked no, and banned and you know from what? every I don't NFL know if arena. I'm supposed to say this, but I, I, I know what you're wearing, so I didn't buy the same thing. I, I purposely had to find out. What? So I, what? Listen. Did my counterpart fucking fail me and He didn't show me it. He just out? told me. No, no, no. Because I showed him what I was going to buy, and he said, Kate, that's okay, right? Like, you, like, we're not wearing anything similar to that. Mine okay. is simply just an old school, like you know, like a Letterman jacket with like mm, like leather sick. leather arms. This thing is from like thirty five years ago, nice. and the guy I bought it off of lives in Barrie, Ontario, and I found it on Kijiji, and he's like, and I just was like, how is this gonna fit me? And like, I just want it because I'm going to the Buffalo game, and he's like, normally people on Kijiji don't like send stuff, right? Like you go pick it up, right? Like yeah. it's kind of a pain in the ass to go ship shit. Well, I. Was like, I'm going to the game and I really want it. And he's like, I'm just so happy that a fan's going to get it. I'll absolutely go and find out what oh, shipping's going to cost. Oh, and I'm oh, like, You're lying oh, to okay. him. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm biggest Fair. fan, man. And my, me and my buddies are going. So, yeah, but the the bottom half, and I don't really care if anybody knows, but our legit Zubaz pants. Like, oh, yeah. Like, you can like find some in your side. Zebra, oh, like from the mall yeah, back in the like day? Zub- like, like uh. yeah, jammer pants, Zubaz, Buffalo Bills, zebra printed pants. And then I'm going to wear like my. My Air Jordans, you know, the, the spotted ones, the Justin Timberlake ones? Sure. So I look like, does anybody know who Dale D'Antoni is? No. Riff it's like Raff? you're just making up words. I'm oh, not, I know no. who Riff Raff is. So Riff Raff is now, yeah. so he's two other guys. He's, he's also known as Dale D'Antoni and Jody High Roller, right? Yeah, Jody High Roller. And Dale D'Antoni, well, Riff Raff has put out a rap album. Did yeah. you know this? Yes, of course. That's it just how I know came him. out, Cranberry Vampire. It's actually not bad. I what know of him fuck? as a rapper. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so he so look at the way that he looks. What these else days. does he do? Uh, I think he's just like an influencer. Oh, okay. Like I don't think he does anything else. No. But um, if you if you look at him now, the way that he's dressed up, he's wearing like a mullet. He's super jacked. He always wears like jammer pants and huge pit viper like sunglasses. Blades, on. not shades. Yeah, buddy. And he <laughs> and he and he's got like a big Z in his face. Just go go search Dale Dantoni. This guy is. Amazing. He's okay. straight out of the 80s. So, so that's, that's kind we, of what I'm trying to do. Are we going to flash Nation Real Life while we're there or what? Sure. I mean, I don't do care. Do it for the yeah. pod? I'll do it. But, like, do you know the camera angles? Have you searched Buffalo's? I like how he's taking this so little. No, make sure. I'm not going to pull out my fucking bare tits in minus nine degree weather unless I know it's going to be on. Well, you know something. you're going to be covering it back up with a beautiful vintage leather Bills jacket. If you just took you a photo of yourselves doing it, oh, it's probably God. pretty good. Tom yeah, is well taking this so fucking literal. Well, if you if want we're to literally doing it, then it's up, literal. Wait outside Roger's place until the oldest Oilers fan you think you're going to see that night shows up. Okay. Then have someone over your shoulder, maybe your kids, if they're really your kids, videoing. Just run up, oh, knock that old man out. Boom. Yeah. You say, that we're knocking out the past around here, G. <laughs> Goodbye, <laughs> 80 Oilers. Oh, and That's then hit exactly him again. exactly how I want my kids to yes. picture me. As they're dragging you off and banning will, you from downtown I will Edmonton. definitely do this in Buffalo. With if, golden you jump, if you jump off back. of an RV yes, onto yes. a burning chair, a burning table. If I can, I will do it shortly with actually? Nation Real Life. Oh, fuck. I'm, I'm not, if, if the opportunity prevents itself, Presents feel, itself. Rep, whatever. Yes, sure. Potato, potato. If the opportunity prevents itself. If it prevents itself. <laughs> yeah. 
Maybe I'm trying to. It's a Freudian slip. How many muffins have it. you had? Oh, I'm fucking high. Seriously, on what's all? All the other five are done, and this one is sitting here fully intact. What's, what's fucking wrong with it? Because it's facing you. It's I can't it? reach. But what over is to it? Get one it. of these has a pin in them. That's huh. right. Not for real, your M check. Just for jokes. <laughs> but yes, if if if, if 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 the opportunity presents itself, yes, I don't know if I can prevent myself from taking advantage of it. Yeah, well, then Is that just, how you do it? Yeah. then like what what do we put on? Like you got to figure out what the type of applicator it has to be so that it's not a a sharpie that's going to be there for a week and b not like lipstick or some sort of like chalk that's going to if it gets oh, a little sharpie, hot in there it will just okay. mm-hmm. turn into a really leaky oils nation. Looking. Can you tag our sponsors on yourself? Can you at Japa Machinery well, at Mary Brown's Chicken? Around your central well, I'll, message, I'll, I'll, yeah, because I'm, I'm. It's mm. gonna be a Mary and Browns. Aircoms. It's not gonna. Well, maybe not a Aircom pop is a. In. Well, yes. Shout out Aircom. Aircom is, is a, an Oilers Nation sponsor now. Proud Oilers Nation sponsor. Shout out to uh, one of the most reputable people in the world. Yes, who could correctly identify what happened at a fishing tournament? Yep. Yeah. The yeah. one, a uh, one, Sean Lavin. Yes. We brought him on here. He exonerated he comes Chalmers. On that here, we monitor. He gets completely defamed for something he never did, and then gives you money. What a fucking hustle this place is. It's unbelievable. Hey, you want a muffin? <laughs> leave, leave those comments for Reddit, man. Get us there. <laughs> All right. Um, before we keep going on, guys, we need to give some love to Jappa. I'm not sure if they would approve of being written on your bare chest and Absolutely flashed on TV would. at a Bills game. Because I'm going to smash that table just like a C-79 Packer would smash some kind of hole that needs to be smashed. Well, their 8- and 12-ton Packers are currently at discounts of up to $20,000 thanks to their once-in-a-blue-moon end-of-the-year sale. So you can save twenty grand and get a legitimate Packer and do it the traditional way with Jappa, or you can just let me run through it naked. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, with Jappa, well, of maybe course, pants. there are some additional options. Uh, you won't have to pay until the end of the year. If you oh, don't yeah. need so it, no, until no, the- I pay upfront payment for me, so just remember that. You are a douchebag like Reddit said. <laughs> if you don't need it until the spring, they'll even store it for you. I'm not sure what kind of connection you can even make to that. Um, but you also get a free end of season service with it as well. 90 day powertrain warranty. That's pretty good. Okay. If you want more info, check them out. JappaEquipment.com. They're on Twitter and Instagram at Jappa underscore machinery. And if, if you want to go directly to the source and you're like, I need more info right now, give them a call. 780-962-5272. I wanted to go back to this 90 day powertrain warranty. Please do. <laughs> if there Elaborate. <laughs> If there was one player that Ken Holland <laughs> would like a 90-day oh. warranty recall on, oh, who do you okay. think that one player would be? Oh, It's fucking Granlund, man. I hate to say it. You know, I, Too I, long I didn't to read? Granlund. I hate to say it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the hammer out there. I'm going to say Jujar. You think he would like to pull back his two-year deal for Jujar Carroll? I would say he would like to pull back that two-year deal for Jujar. Just peel it right back? Yeah, maybe give him a one. Maybe <laughs> mm-hmm, make him mm-hmm. earn that second year. Yeah. Just pull it out and peel it back and get Jujar out of here. <laughs> pull Jesus it out, Christ. slap it down, <laughs> knock it around. I was sitting there. I was like, this is going to be great to use in a promo. I'm not going to use. Why? We'll get listens. It's yeah. the digital equivalent of getting my tits out. <laughs> it's a girthy ad read. It had some meat to it. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. Hammer. The poor Nuge is a baby, and we've decided Jujar is the biggest dick on earth. Like, who gets what for reputations around here is arbitrary. Um, Jay, Maybe Reddit was right that we did make oh. everything up. Yeah. Player Shirelli or Holland would like to use his 90 day warranty on Jay? Of course. Oh, Chase on. Or well, no, because that would have been 90 days into his career as an oiler. You no, no, well, he, just, right? he, just, oh, he just signed him. He signed oh, him in the offseason nice. for 2 million, 2.2 over yeah. 2. No, no wonder why he was sticking around waiting for the oil. Like I, I'm, I, w- I want last year's chase on to be back, but obviously he's not going to be playing with Connor McDavid. But like to pay play a guy two point two million for what we're getting right now, that doesn't sit well with me at the moment. Yeah, and for me it'd be Grandland. He gave one point three million dollars to a guy who can't stay in the lineup. That's a joke. I just I like hating on him now. It's I, my new thing. He's I have goat. no idea who they should t- because like I uh, I would say Kara too. I'm, so having a, I'm having a tough time watching Jujar. So you I just can like, talk about I, a 80 year old Texan selling mattresses and yeah. recall all the facts as though uh, this I, um, is the most important thing that's uh, ever happened. I'm but just you trying can't. to find a way to bring up this lineup for tonight. Oh, it's an interesting. It's what an the fuck? Shout out DFO. Tonight. Shout out DFO. It's a Mary Brown's pop in. Yeah. Mary Brown's pop in for the bite sized morsels of 100% breast meat, chicken coated in Mary's seasoning, and served hot, crispy, and so yummy. Choose Thai for an extra kick of sweet heat. 
top to sesame seeds. Uh, yeah, it's oh, a Mary Brown's so pop-in where we heat. check. Okay, <laughs> where yeah. we check out daily. So face here's off. my pop-in. So we've got McDavid. What? In between dry set. Here's what. Your surprise is in the lineup. Yeah, pop in. Tell us. I am popping in. All right. <laughs> Literally popping as we speak. <laughs> you you got to shut up so I can keep popping. His collar's popped. Get that rope out. Because it's minus 20 in here. My collar has oh, to be popped. I can even bring gloves down next here. Fucking muffins were fresh as could be. Jeez. Yeah, they cooled down quick. If I get a sponsor <laughs> emailing me being like, love the ad reads, but can you not surround it with penis talk? Well, I didn't <laughs> say anything about penises. I, I'm Clearly, glad we don't have a, have a deal with the that. rope shack. <laughs> Some of the largest rope in all of Edmonton. <laughs> or husky wrenches. <laughs> hey, we know a guy who has a cable wrenches. company. We That's do. prime for this. We do. A cable gosh. The ski wrench. <laughs> That'd be so funny if the ad read was the rope of the day. Speaking okay. of Husky, <laughs> we do owe it to a few of our, two of our listeners, the Husky score. Anyway, that's for another time. Oh, wow. Okay. So I, want I want you to know that I'm, remem- I'm remembering to do this. I've not forgotten. Yeah, he, he, it has to be told, I, but we can't do it right this minute because I'm sure you're in Yeah, because you're popping in. Sorry. I am popping you're in. You're mid-popping. So we got McDavid centering Dreisaitl and Cassian. Shocker. r h centering Gagne and Jujar. Uh-huh. Haas centering Chasen and Neil. Sheehan centering Russell and Yurko. Why? Yurcho. Yurcho. Whatever. There's no H in there. You love Finland, what? Finn. Why? Has Gagne showed up to be up on the second line? And diapers. why is Neil not on the first? What the fuck is going on here? Well, Neil hasn't been on the first line. Uh, sorry. Year. Yeah, sorry. On the um, second. And Jujar, this whole thing just so seems... So quick to dismiss. Mm-hmm. Knows, knows everything, everything about the grump. mattress guy. Doesn't know what line Neil is on. Yeah. No, I don't. I just always see him on the power play, I guess. His teeth gleaming. Um, yeah, they, they want to try spark Jujar, I think, is, is yeah. kind of the move here. It's the motivation behind these line combos. Gagne was okay against Washington. And if you can get Florida, Jujar going, like if you can get him up. to start playing hard, <laughs> he'll be a lot more effective. You wouldn't even believe how effective he can be. Absolutely. Got to get to the stem of the problem. <laughs> I'm so close to ending this podcast for the day. <laughs> Good thing we haven't been recording the entire time. Exactly. He has had a very flaccid game lately, but seriously, this guy, <laughs> I think it's great. You're, you're, I know you were looking for a pun there, but honestly, he doesn't seem like he's banging it. Like, Who? Jujar? Yeah. Uh, no. He, he doesn't seem like he's banging enough. Yeah. He's hard a flop. enough at all times. He's a flop. <laughs> he's a flop. He's the biggest flop the others have ever seen. When he's flopping, he has no he needs, peers. He needs to hammer one home. No here, peers. But, but back to Jay's point, like when he does get going, <laughs> it, it's tough for the opposition to take. Ah, yeah, now he's doing it. Yay! But it's so vanilla, but it's canceled. It was cute. Thanks, guys. Yeah, canceled. Jeez, oh, Mary Browns was so offended by what you just said there. It's a sophomore. It's good. I didn't sign up for this shit. <laughs> oh, I love it. Well. Yeah. I think I'm going to call it because uh, I've run out of Jujar dick jokes. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's a pretty good spot to end it. Anyone else? Anyone got any final takes? Oilers taking on the wings tonight? Win. Bet. Win. Bet. Win. Yeah, my pregame podcast, bet. Two in a row. Let's go. We're on a heater. Hashtag Ooh. fade your Chuck no more. You want to hop on the bandwagon now okay. while I'm getting hot. What do you got tonight? Tonight, Oilers to be winning after the first 20 minutes of the game. Hashtag girthy root. Hashtag... <laughs> Girthy root. Uh, that's your real life bet of the game, which you can also listen to on my pregame podcast. You got to hammer that bet. So what I did was I took the plus one and a half or my, uh, minus one and a half Oilers to win by one and a half tonight. Yeah. Parlayed with the Houston Astros to win by one and a half tonight, Fuck and that is paying smack. out five to one odds. Just so you know. So Four, Houston 40, to win with Oilers to be minus one and a half. No, nope. Oilers and the Houston Astros both both must win their game by two by one and a half. By two. So, yes, obviously with two. Oh, wow. How much, and that is uh, paying five to one. So, a $40 bet is paying out 220 ooh. to 220 bucks. This is why this guy fucking fans us at Oilers games and drinks with the rich people. Yep. Um, well, I'm excited for all the people that listen to this tomorrow to listen to us making our I bets. I hope we're right. And they're going to be wrong. <laughs> and we're going to look so bad. All right. Chalmers, Bag Milk, Wanye J. I'm Tyler Rumchak. Thanks for tuning in to episode 145 of Real Life, which featured a lot of talk about girth and stuff. This episode's over. <laughs>